Sorry about all the jumping around and all that. Just want to get it right for you. You're very welcome today. Welcome to our second stress, a second session about relieving stress. Settle in. Just relax. Maybe you want to get a drink of water. Find a comfortable space to sit. Take a breath and just relax. I don't know about you, but the busyness of getting ready to come and spend a bit of time de-stressing, sometimes it can wind us up. And did you know that 70% of people are stressed at work? 70%. And 40% believe it believe that it negatively affects their life. And then 25% of us, so one in four of us, have health issues related to stress. So it's really important to manage our stress. And today, the focus is on the water element. Calmness, flow, and ease. Now, if you have any questions during the talk, you can put them in the chat and I will address them at the end. I'll be very happy to get your thoughts on it and if you have any questions or anything. And if you're coming, joining us on Facebook, you're very welcome to put them in the messages or the comments and I will come to those after. So, just one moment. There we go. Last week, I talked about the other part of transforming stress to serenity, the fire element, because we need that passion in our lives. We need to have the fire. We need to have the energy to get through our lives and to make things happen that we want to have happen. Now, you can find the recordings on the Energy Flows website or on the Energy Flows YouTube channel. And for today, if you've joined me before, you're going to find new material, new ways to help yourself feel better so you can be better in your life. Today, I'm going to give you tools to deal with stress triggers, mental states, your nervous system, and then a little bit of a rabbit hole, the power of water in our lives. It's a little bit more esoteric, um, but it's a lot of fun. So stress triggers, oh my goodness, I don't know if you keep a list of things to do, or I used to put them on post-it notes and put it up around the house. And there were so many things that were just pushing at me and claiming for my attention. And they were all important. Like if I had to remember to go pick up somebody from school, or I had to remember to turn in a report or to meet an electrician or something. Really important stuff. And if I forgot, there were consequences for it. So we have all these triggers on us. And I'm wondering, how do you deal with stress triggers? Do you have too many things to do? Difficulty setting priorities? Maybe things aren't going well at home or work. I've changed my thoughts about stress, and I, I shared a little bit about this last week. But stress is a natural and healthy response to challenging situations or life events. Where it goes amok, according to the Eight Mental Health Ireland, is when it overwhelms us, when it affects our ability to cope. And this is important too, because if we're not coping, it's kind of like a snowball effect. It can get worse and we're more stressed and we have more effects in our bodies. I'll talk a little bit about that in a few minutes. And it's a downward spiral. But the amazing part is that we can reverse that spiral and transform ourselves and our health. And there's so many ways that we can do that. I share that in other talks, dealing with other difficult emotions. 
But today I'm going to talk about just bringing calmness into your life. Now, I heard a really interesting TED Talk by Kelly McGonigal. And she said that stress is what arises when something you care about is at stake. So it's a signal to us that it's important to pay attention and to manage things. And as I'm talking about all this stress, I just really need to hold my index finger. I'll share a little bit more later about why to do that, but I invite you to hold your finger as well. It doesn't matter if it's right or left. It can just help you to breathe more easily, to be in the flow, and to drop your shoulders. Kind of funny that talk about stress is getting me wound up, but I guess that's just something that happens sometimes. So brain stress, I don't know, when I get stressed, I get headaches, my head hurts. And I know there's new, no nerve endings in our brain, but it feels like the pressure is just coming in and just as if things are on fire and I'd like it to ease a bit. So let's talk about ways to ease that stress, to ease the pressures on our brain and to feel better. What if we could change the way we think about stress? And I've shared about this before, but if we could open ourselves to stress in a way that's positive, to be energized by it and to be motivated, it would make such a difference. It can, stress can help us move forward and that energy gives us passion. But at the same time, we need to balance the fire and water in our lives. If we have too much fire, we get burned out. It's kind of like the wildfires. They just consume everything. And then nothing's left. Everything is destroyed. So our bodies need the fire. But we also need the water because we need time to recoup and repair. Now, if we just have the water element, if we're just relaxing, if we're just calm, then it's a bit like a flood or a tidal wave. And that's just as destructive because it just wipes out everything and everything's underwater. And for me, I get bogged down and I'm just not going as well in my life. So I need to bring some fire into my life and some water and to have a balance with it. So let's come out from under the water. Let's have some fire and some passion and to just see how we can improve our nervous system. Because the third thing that I was telling you that I would share with you today is about our nervous system. I'm missing part of the slide. I'm really sorry. But the headlines are there. So um, we have our nervous system. And everybody knows about nerves and um, that we have our nervous system with our spinal cord and all the nerves that run through our body. One of the things that I've learned since I started studying anatomy and physiology and Jinshin Jitsu is that some parts of our nervous system, and anybody who already knows this, bear with me. Sorry, I know some of you are probably well versed in all this, so I'll keep it short, but I do think it's important because some of the parts of our nervous system we're aware of when we have a sensation and it conveys a message to our body. When we think I need to go and reach something and we move our body, move our arm to go grab something. That's part of our nervous system. I'm not going to talk about that today, but what I am going to talk about today is our automatic nervous system or autonomic nervous system. And those are all the things that are going on that our bodies are taking care of us all the time that we don't have to consciously control. If you think about it, how our blood is pumping, 
we're breathing. Sometimes we pay attention to our breath, sometimes we don't. And just all the chemical processes. So within all those automatic or autonomic processes, we have two parts. We have our fight flight part, and that allows us to gear up to be ready for a fight or to be ready to run a race. And that's really useful to us in limited quantities because it helps our heart beat faster. We breathe and transfer more oxygen through our system. We have more adrenaline. We also just can focus a lot more. And that's really good. We need that part of our body and it's the sympathetic part of our autonomic nervous system. And then there's the other part, the parasympathetic part of our nervous system. And I kind of think of this part like a parachute because if you've jumped out of plane, jumped out of a plane and you're hurtling towards the earth, you need something to slow things down so that you don't crash. That part of our nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system, helps us to heal and relax and to avoid burnout. And the processes associated with that part of our nervous system slow down our breathing, slow down our heart rate. And the chemicals that are produced are very different. We have oxytocin produced. Whereas in our fight flight state, we have adrenaline produced. Now, I, I, I've been studying this for a bit and it's really puzzling to me because I said, this is great. We have two parts of our nervous system. Yeah, yeah, got it. But is it like a sliding scale or does it flip a switch? And actually it does because when our sympathetic nervous system is running, we're going full out and then we can switch it by breathing differently by holding our fingers, by doing meditation. All these things can help us transition to a more calm, reparative state. So that's my little bit on the nervous system. And um, I share more in other um, talks and on my website, but I'll leave it there for now. So here's a rabbit hole for you. This is the fourth point that I promised you. We are water. 70% of our bodies are water. And uh, some parts of our being are even higher. And it's really interesting to think about how that plays out in our bodies and in our being. So again, switch fingers, hold your other index finger because that helps the water energies. I came across this really interesting theory called the meaning in water, the hidden secret, the secret messages in water by Emoto. And what he did was he looked at the energies surrounding water and looked at how it affected the chemical structure of the water. If you look at the different snowflakes or ice crystals up on the top. To me, they look beautiful, regular, even. These are all where positive emotions were put into the water, positive energies like love and harmony. And then down on the bottom are ones that were more negative, like evil and hate and before someone's been praying. And these are more irregular. So it's interesting to me because if we're that much water, and we all know that our self-talk can make such a difference. I don't know about you, but sometimes my head just runs and it's, oh. I'm, I'm nicer to my best friend than to myself sometimes. But 
those times when I am nicer to myself, when I'm more gentle, more positive, I can feel better. And this suggests to me that it's more than just in my head, it's actually in my body and it changes how I'm showing up and changes how I'm feeling. Such a difference. So it's a bit of a rabbit hole. I, I was talking to my a friend about it and he's like, he's an engineer and he's like, hmm, don't know about that. But I'm enthralled and really intrigued by it. So if you're interested, you can access that information and delve into it further for yourself. I'd like you to take a break. The, the mental heavy part of the talk is finished now. To just take a break and to indulge in the water. We have lots of places on our bodies that support us. They're called safety energy locks and there's 52 of them. 26 on the right and 26 on the left. And they go from our head to our toe. And one of them on our back, just at the base of our rib cage, I have a picture there. This is our safety energy lock 23. And this is the only spot on our body, the only safety energy lock that is dedicated to the fourth depth, which is about the water element. When we have harmony in our bodies and harmony in our beings and things are flowing well, we're ground. When we get tense, when things aren't going well, we clamp down, kind of like a muscle cramp, and then the energy can't flow and rejuvenate us. So if you think about it, how can you be in your life and be trapped in fear and still do the things you want to do? I know a lot of um, people like Susan Jeffers says, feel the fear and do it anyway. I, I agree with that to a point, but I find it much more gentle, much more supportive, much easier to support my body and to harmonize my energies so that I don't have to feel the fear as much. It's one of those things where if we can reduce the fear in our lives, we can flow through life more easily. And by holding that place on our bodies, it helps the energy it, to restart again. It reminds our body of how it used to be, how the energy should be. Our bodies are amazing. They really do take care of us and let us experience life fully. We only get one this go around, so we might as well take care of it. So as you're holding your 23s, just relax. And maybe picture yourself on a beach and you're barefoot. The water is flowing over your feet, up and back. And if you dig your toes down into the sand, I don't know if you've ever done that. It just feels so good. So we're grounded into the earth and the water is washing away all the tension, all the worries, all the dust and dirt from your day. Such a difference. I have one more scene to take you to. And for this one, we're gonna change to using a mudra. And that's where we hold our thumb, index, and middle finger on either hand. Just gently hold on to it. Rest your hand in the other hand and breathe. 
And the image that came to me, I took this picture a couple months ago in a park near me, Donadi Forest Park. And I was there taking my walk. And I just saw this scene with this very inviting water and wood and air. And it's one of those things where I decided to have a, a sit down for a few minutes and I found myself holding this mudra. I was at the park because I was a little frustrated with things in my life and getting out and getting some exercise, some sunshine, it made such a difference. But it also helped me to sit for 10 minutes and just to hold this mudra. And as I was sitting and relaxing and dropping my shoulders, following my breath, I remembered that Jiro Marai used these mudras to heal himself all those years ago, back in the 20th century. It's such a blessing to have them. This hand position or mudra helps us to release excess tension, transform our worries to wonder, and helps us to regenerate. And just like all the other mudras, it helps us to reduce our daily fatigue. So I'd suggest that you hold this if you ever have any of those concerns. And you can hold them for a little while, you can hold them longer. Sometimes if I'm watching a, a show on Netflix or on the television, I'll hold a mudra, actually quite often, and it just helps me to feel better. Most of you have heard about Jiro Murai already. Like I said, he was back in the 20th century. He healed himself from the terminal illness and developed an understanding of how the energy works in our bodies. And they follow clear pathways. And we have 12 organ function energies, and we have some more overarching energies that are responsible for our beings. I won't go into detail because this is just a good introduction to you. I can always share more with you on a one-to-one -one basis or if I'll be sharing more in future talks. So bring Jin Shin Jitsu into your life, like today, when you're learning more about it. You can also bring it in by receiving a session. And I invite you to close your eyes. Just rest back in your chair, or if you're on a couch, maybe put your feet up. Maybe you even have a fluffy blanket nearby that you can cover up with. And just imagine that you're leaning back and you can just relax and breathe. If you were with me for a session, that's exactly what you would do. You would relax and breathe and just most people drift off to sleep. And while you relax and your body recovers, I hold the space for you. And I move through the energy flow pathways very gently. And just helping your body to remember what it used to do. Because it's always there. It's just that things kind of get in the way. I would think of it kind of in two ways. I'll give you two examples today. The first one is if you have a muscle cramp, think how good it feels when we can release that tension, when we can stretch out and expand. And then the other is to picture a river and the river's flowing. There's some debris in the river though. And as long as the river keeps clearing those tree branches and bits of soil and rocks, it flows freely. But if it starts to get caught up 
it doesn't flow as freely and things can get backed up. So little by little, it's not going to do its job. Very much like that, our body has the energy to do things and always receives the energy from the universe, but it can get bound up. So by releasing the tension, we can feel better and show up in our lives. So, uh, what was I going to say? I'm all, I'm all in the couch and all that. Maybe I should ring my bell because when I finish a session, I always <coughs> ring the bell to wake the person gently. So I'll come out of my reverie now. <laughs> um, I wanted to share with you today that there's a resource bank because I know that some of you are well familiar with Jin Shin Jitsu whereas other, others of you may not be. So I'm showing you here that the information from all the talks in the Dublin Mind Body, and we're in Galway this time, the Mind Body Experience are available to you. And you can access, access them on my website. If you go to the home page, the welcome page, there's a purple button that you can just click on and it takes you to the page with all the talks. And there's there's eight at the moment. I need to add yesterday's talk and today's talk to that. And um, you can just click on it and watch it and access the additional information. And if you haven't found my website yet, you can go to, the, to YouTube and just Google energy or search for energy flows. And then you'll find all the talks there as well, plus a few more. So there is help for you. And it is something you can access right from your own home. And then the takeaways from today, as always, Jin Jin Jitsu is something you can do here in your home, when you're out and about, if you're stressed and you, you can't leave the situation, you can do things to feel better and to stay present and to be able to cope with the challenges. And the other thing is that Jin Shin Jitsu, all the information that I've given you today, I've just introduced a tiny bit and I've prepared a flyer or um, a set of tips that includes all these points plus a few more. And if you want to put your contact detail in a message to me or in the chat, I'll be happy to send those out to you. I offered to do this on other talks and yesterday as well. Now, each of these information sheets are different. They're specific tips for the concern that I'm talking about today. Because one of the things that you might be surprised about, or you might not, is that all our energies are related in our bodies. And there's so many ways to improve how we're feeling and how we're functioning. And when we do a session or when we choose a self-help, we can tailor that to help our body the most effective way possible. Because if you're stressed, some holds are gonna help you, some flows are gonna help you. If you're having a tough time, and I know that sometimes people go through challenging times and they might be depressed, they might feel worn out, they might not be sleeping well. And we can make improvements in our lives on all these things by improving our energy. So if you'd like the tips to help you transition from stress to serenity using the water element, let me know. I would be happy to give that to you. And then the other thing is that if you'd like to experience more Jin Shin Jitsu with me, you can have a session where we talk about ways that you can help yourself or you can receive a session where you just lie down under that fluffy blanket and relax and be renewed. So the, the, it's all there for you. And the information is available online, in books, and when the restrictions lift, it'll be in person as well. So I hope this is helpful. If you do have any questions, definitely let me know because 
I, I've been doing this Jinshin Jitsu since 2012. And I study with it and live with it every day and I love it. But it's something, it may be a new concept, a new experience to you. And I'd be so happy to share that with you. So I'm going to stop the Facebook section of the talk and I'll stay on in the Zoom room to answer any questions. And if you do have questions and you're attending through Facebook, just put a comment in or you can always private message me. So thanks very much. Hope you have a great day.